Hello everyone, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are doing a little follow-up to our recent solder mask video, and we're gonna look at a viewer question about applying solder mask openings for footprints for shielding cams. Now, shielding in a PCB is very common if you look in some stock images on the internet, but also if you look on real designs such as mobile devices or IoT products. We're gonna take a look at some shielding can recommendations for footprints in manufacturer data sheets, and I'm gonna show you how to design SMD pads for those shielding cans in Altium Designer. Make sure to hop into your copy of Altium Designer and follow along, and let's get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at that viewer question. Superfan Peter Sage writes, I think a nice follow-up to this might be making footprints for shielded cans and driven guards, both of which require solder mask openings. You're exactly right, Peter. If we're talking about SMD shielding cans, those do require a solder mask opening because, of course, those need to solder directly onto the PCB. Now, of course, there are through-hole shielding cans, and those also need to solder onto the PCB. So let's take a look at some of the options for shielding cans, and we'll see that there are some off-the-shelf options that are pretty easy to implement in your PCB design software. Now, if you just start searching for EMI shielding or shielding can or PCB shielding on Octopart, you're gonna see a lot of different options. So let's just take a quick look. Here I'm gonna search for PCB shielding and of course you can see there's even an autocomplete. If we start scrolling down, you're gonna see a lot of different things like connector shielding. You'll see some of these things like these PCB enclosures, a lot of different stuff. And as you can see here, we have 100 pages worth of results, so I'm not gonna scroll through all the pages. But I wanna look at three options here so you can see what's in the data sheet and how these can be used in a PCB, and that'll show you what you need to do for a footprint. Let's take a look at this first option from Leader Tech. You can see here that this is an EMI shielding can, and it's about 17 millimeters long. That 17 millimeters is just under an inch. You can fit a decent amount of circuitry in there. Now, if we take a look at the data sheet, this is one shielding can option where they actually don't give a footprint recommendation. Now, you can see here that it is surface mount and it has a set of tabs on it. And those tabs are what are gonna mount to the PCB and get soldered. But unfortunately, as I said, there is no footprint recommendation for this particular component. Let's take a look at another option from Leader Tech. If you go into the data sheet for this component, you'll actually see that this is really a catalog, not a data sheet, but they have a couple of different options here for putting this shielding can onto a PCB. You can see here in this image, we have both surface mount as well as through hole options. And these through hole options work pretty much just like any other through hole component. We have some tabs that are gonna press into the PCB. Here you can see that this is about a 40 mil wide tab, so one millimeter wide. And it's just going to press into a standard mounting hole. It'll then get soldered just like any other component. Now you can see in the top half of this screen that we do have some surface mount options options as well. Those surface mount options essentially mount the same way. You have a series of tabs on the bottom side of that shielding can. Those tabs provide a surface where the shielding can can mount directly onto the PCB and then it gets soldered just like normal. Let's take a look at another option from Laird. Now here you can see that this shielding can is much smaller. It's only 12 by 13 millimeters. If we go into the data sheet, we actually have a mechanical drawing. Now, if you're going to create a footprint for one of these components, it always helps to have this kind of mechanical drawing because you can see here in this PDF that we have a drawing specifically for the footprint. So this is exactly what we want. Laird makes a wide variety of these shielding cans, so I suggest you start looking there if you wanna find a good component that is well documented and you can easily start creating these footprints for a shielding can in your PCB. So here, what we're looking at is the copper arrangement that is going to be used for our solder pads for this particular shielding can. Now, if I go into Altium Designer, you can see here, I have a new PCB library file pulled up 
And we can start using this to then create the footprint for our shielding can. The best way to do this when we start creating the footprint is we want to put all of those copper pads on, but we want to put them on such that we can automatically apply a solder mask opening. Now, if you go back to that previous video about solder mask openings on fill regions, we saw that in Altium Designer, there is a way to enable the solder mask opening rule to apply to fills. That's exactly what we want to do in this footprint for these shielding cans. We want to ensure that we can adjust the solder mask opening through a design rule rather than drawing in a fixed solder mask opening directly in the footprint. Let's start drawing out one of the SMD pads for this shielding can footprint. Now you can see here that we basically have a one millimeter by 3.8 millimeter section going here vertically. So I'm gonna draw that out here in Altium Designer. I'm gonna apply the solder mask opening rule, and then I'm gonna let you, the viewer, finish drawing out this shielding can footprint so you can use it in your design. So here we have a one by 3.8 millimeter section of fill. All I'd need to do is use the fill tool. I can draw something out. Here inside of the properties panel, I can of course just select this, set my length to one millimeter, set my width to 3.8 millimeters. There we go. You can see I already have one of the pads ready to go for this shielding can. You can see here that we have a paste mask rule and we have a solder mask rule. Now for this, if we're going to solder this shielding can onto the PCB in a reflow process, we wanna make sure that we apply the paste mask rule. We can set a manual expansion. I recommend just using the paste mask rule and all you have to do is just click the rule button right here. Next, for the solder mask expansion, we wanna make sure that we also apply a solder mask expansion using the rule. That way we can adjust it when we're in the PCB layout. So here, if I click the rule option, it's going to apply a default value in the footprint. And as you can see here, that default value is four mils. Now, that's just something that the system applies by default inside of a PCB library. Once you get into the PCB editor, you'll be able to change that value based on what you put in your design rule. So what value should you use for the solder mask expansion on this kind of component? Frankly, I would recommend it using the same value that you use on any other SMD component. I normally use a one mil solder mask expansion. That allows me to account for one mil of misregistration in the board once it gets built up. And that will make sure you have a fully open pad visible in the PCB layout for soldering. Next, how do we apply these L-shaped regions and ensure that they also have a consistent solder mask opening? Well, you have two options to do odd-shaped regions. What you could do is you could use the solid region tool. And as you see here, if I just draw out an arbitrary shape, I also have the option to apply a paste mask expansion and a solder mask expansion. I think the easier way to do this is to just use the fill tool and as you can see here, I can just select a spot on this existing piece of copper and draw out another section of fill. Once I draw that out, I can apply the paste mask expansion and I can apply the solder mask expansion rule just like I did for the other piece of copper. And together, that's going to fully open the solder mask around this L-shaped landing pad. So that way I can solder this shielding can onto the PCB. Now this shows how to create, for example, an L-shaped piece of copper, which you can then open up the solder mask on and then use that for soldering. But remember, we're dealing with shielding cans, so we may need to actually connect that to a net. And in this case, we would wanna connect it to the ground net. So how do we do that? Well, one thing we could do is we could of course start putting a pad or via onto this section of copper. I can always just use the pad tool as you see here set this to the top layer, and then I could make the pad very small, for example, 10 mil by 10 mil. We have a pad with the designator that we can then connect to a net. Another thing that you can do is you can use a custom pad. In order to use a custom pad, you need to actually draw out an outline. What I'm gonna do is set my trace width to one mil here, and I'm gonna draw out an outline that shapes around this L-shaped piece of copper. Now, when I do this, there's gonna be an option to take this outline and then use it to create a custom pad. Once you do this, you can then just select all of those pieces of copper and then go into tools, convert, and create custom pad from selected outline. That's gonna then create a custom pad with this shape and you can then apply the paste mask and solder mask expansion rules as usual.
Thanks for watching this video, everybody. We love getting your questions, so make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And of course, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.